My mic was muted for some reason. I don't know who did that, but uh, it wasn't me, and I was so confused. I'm like, it's it's set on the right audio device. It's just not working. Why is it not working? And then I just I was like, oh, it's muted. Anyways, guys, hello, guys. This is What About Nintendo, and today I am here for another episode of Coffee Talk. A lot later than usual, a lot later than usual, and that is because I woke up. You know, I'm at 10. It's all on time. I'm like, okay. Okay. My alarm just woke me up. I'm gonna turn that off. Sleep. That's what happened. And then, you know, I woke up. And it's like... Oh, almost 1. And I'm like, what, what, what happened? And then there was more news. And I had to catch up. And I had to get everything set up. And I had to eat. And I had to make my coffee. So, yeah, that's why we're late. Uh, but sorry about that. Very sorry. Uh, but I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I think life may move on. I'm not sure though. We'll have to wait and see. Hey Mason Jones, how are you doing? Hey Josh Sheriff, how are you doing? Hey Tiny Office Gamer, how are you doing? Hey Black Star Dude, how are you doing? I hope you guys are having a lovely afternoon or whatever time it is where you guys are. Just listen to this music. Let it, let it calm your soul. Let it, let it just wash over you, make you happy inside. But we're not here to have calming music that makes you happy inside. We are here to talk about the latest Nintendo news. So let's get right into the first topic. I need to be in the other mode. Here we are. And that is, oh, hold on. Let me read Robert's comment. Sometimes I say, I hate life. I'm going to kill myself. And then I get a notification saying that you're doing coffee talk. So I say, let's stay alive one more day. Ah. Oh, I can't tell whether to be sad or happy at the moment. <laughs> then I just laugh. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. I'm sorry you feel this way. But I'm glad I can help you out. Life is always worth living. You just have to find the reason. You just got out of school? Nice. You like my Zelda coffee mug? Dude, it is dope. This thing is a beast. Look at that beauty. Oh, also, before we start, I got a confirmation on when my lights are being sent out. And when they're getting to me. My Luna lighting setup so this camera will look sweet during coffee talk and that is this Friday so this Friday sometime this Friday by the end of the day I should be getting those so next week's coffee talks assuming they're not lying to me and they're actually getting it on time exactly when they say should be looking pretty dope if I can get that lighting set up uh, all good and perfect yeah I think we've waited long enough let's get right on into the topic so first topic it's for all those Switch hackers out there. Nintendo has started banning Switch hackers from online services. So, if you have hacked your Switch, if you've opened that thing up, you soldered the two places, I forget where, and now you're hacking it, you're running Linux on there, you're running Netflix on there, I don't know what you're running on there, you're running all kinds of stuff on there, homebrew, whatever the hell you're running on there. Be careful, because... You might get banned from online services. If you're running these things, be very careful. Now, it can even, apparently, it can even seems to be able to detect even if you're not currently in Linux. Like, if you're offline and you use Linux, and then, you know, you boot up back to the normal version and then you go back online, it can still detect that you've modified it. So, if you've modified it, probably just don't go online because you're gonna, I mean, you're just... You're probably screwed at this point. Like, it doesn't matter if you've already hacked... If you've hacked it, you're pretty much screwed. Like, it's just a matter of time before they detect that you've hacked it and they're banned from online services. So if you've hacked your Nintendo Switch, guess what? Prepare to buy a brand new one because you're kind of screwed out of ever playing online. Or at least that's how it seems so far. Maybe you can get away from it. Maybe you can, uh, you know, somehow get under the radar. Maybe you can unhack the Switch and go back. I don't know how that would work. I'm not a hacker, but as far as we know, Nintendo is banning people from the online service who have hacked their Switches, which is why I didn't hack mine, because I knew this kind of stuff would happen. Uh, so, and they said those who are banned, uh, apparently according to people who have, uh, you know, had themselves banned, those who are banned cannot access the eShop or online gameplay, interact with friends, or post. 
but the news feed and updating apps still works. So if you need to update an app in order to play it or to get that latest uh, update for DLC or whatever the heck you need, you can still get that. But if you want to actually go play Splatoon 2 online, you're too bad you need to go buy another Nintendo Switch. Because you, yeah, messed up. That's why you don't hack. That's why you don't hack things, people, because you get screwed over. Maybe you can hack it if you still don't want to, if you don't care about playing online, you can hack it. Uh, but if you care about playing online for any game you're ever going to get, uh, do not hack your Switch because you will get banned. Or at least there's a high likelihood that you will be banned. But I'm assuming most of us here aren't hackers and probably won't get banned. So let's move on to the next topic, and that is... The NC is just really loud for me. Hopefully that's not too loud for you. In fact, I'm going to turn that down on you guys. Let me know how the, the music is. Hey, Tiny House Gamer, what's going on? Your phone died. That could lead into the dockless switch. Actually, I didn't lead into the dockless switch because I did. I think I'm saving that for later. Um, RIP phone. Yeah. Uh, what happened is people are getting banned if they've hacked their switches, so don't hack your switch because then you'll get banned from ever playing online the entirety of that time you own that console, so you have to buy an entirely new one. So if you don't want to buy an entirely extra switch just to hack it, don't hack your switch. You think it's fine? Oh, okay, so turn it back then. Good, good, good. There you go. All right, so Nintendo has trademarked N64. They've applied for an N64 trademark. Now, what the trademark is for, we don't know. Apparently, the purpose of the trademark covers a number of things, including a video game program, controllers for a game machine, joysticks for, joysticks for a video game machine, TV game machine, and more. So, it doesn't seem like this is for virtual console or anything like that, as they're actually trademarking actual Nintendo controllers and different things like an actual game machine called an N64. So this definitely seems like it is an N64 Mini. And I think it makes sense. I mean, that's the next thing coming up. It was either that or like the Game Boy Mini. Kind of surprised they didn't do the Game Boy Mini, but I feel like that might be more expensive because it's smaller. You have to actually put a screen on the unit itself, uh, stuff like that. So that might have made it more expensive. Maybe it'd have to be like $100 instead of the 80. Uh, but this one, N64 Mini is probably coming soon. It's probably coming soon, people. So, get ready for that. I thought it'd be fun, though, to go over, you know, a couple games that people in the comments would want to see on the N64 Mini. So, assuming this is true, let me know what games you would love to see on the N64 Mini. I'll go over five that just come off the top of my head. First off, Mario 64. First game I ever played. Amazing Mario game. Love it so much. Second best Mario game in my opinion. Eh, maybe third. Maybe Mario Galaxy is better. I'm not really sure. I'd have to go back and play them both. Uh, one of the best Mario games ever made. Amazing game. Ocarina of Time. That is my first Zelda game. Zelda is my favorite series of all time. The game is absolutely amazing. Love to play that again. Uh, let's see. Banjo and Kazooie. Hopefully. Microsoft, please let the Rare IP be on here. Please, 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 please. Uh, number four. Probably Smash Brothers 64. That game was absolutely amazing. Still an amazing game, even though all the other Smash games. Uh, number five, Mario Kart 64. Love the freedom that you could explore some of the tracks. I loved the fact that you could, like, in the train stage, you could, if you wanted to, you could just stop racing and go, you know, explore around and uh, race around the train and stuff like that. I think it was awesome. And I guess I'll cheat and I go for number six because I thought I'd have enough for this one. But GoldenEye. 007 is an amazing game. Why the heck did my allergies just spark up all of a sudden? <laughs> eh! Hate you, allergies. Why do you hate me? My face. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on, guys. Oh, sorry. Allergies are killing me there. Alright, let's see. You know someone that hacked to get Splatoon 1 Octo Gear? Oof. Oof. Oh no. The Game Boy Micro is already a thing? No, no, no. I know the Game Boy Micro is already a thing. I'm talking about a Game Boy Mini, like 
Like the SNES Mini and stuff. I mean like a new machine. Not I know the Game Boy Micro is a thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> Lego Racers. I had Lego Racers. That was a pretty decent game. Uh, I, f I always preferred Mario Kart, but Lego Racers was cool because you could like build your car and there was like you could get like the different colored Legos as items and stuff. So that was cool. Let's see. Pilot Ring 64. Never played that one. I heard it was really good though. Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Yes, both good ones. Rare, please. Yes, rare. Why? I feel like Conquer's Bad Fur Day, however, is not going to be on this. Even if Rare is like all good for it. I feel like Nintendo wouldn't want that game to be on it just because that game is, you know, super, super mature. And they would want to keep that off the, NES, the, the NC4 Mini just in case parents want to get this as a gift for their kids. Uh, maybe they'll have a way to, like, lock out that game. Like, for if you're not 18 or up or whatever, I don't know how they would do that and, like, have some kind of parental controls on it or something, but I feel like Nintendo wouldn't want Conqueror's Bad Fur Day to be on a console that's, you know, a lot of parents would probably be getting for their children for Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Smash 64 online for the Mini. <sighs> Dude, I wish Minis could do online play. I guess that's what the Nintendo Switch online stuff is for with, like, the NES Classic. Or the NES games that are getting on there with online play. Hopefully they add like N64 games with online play and any SNES games with online play and GameCube games with online play, cause that'd be dope. Killer Instinct Gold. Never played that. Wave Race 64. I heard that's really good, yeah. How about a Game Boy that doesn't require cartridges? I mean that's what it would be. It wouldn't require cartridges, it'd all just be downloaded on the unit like the SNES and the NES Mini. So like you could hook up to a TV and play. Actually, that's probably would be an option as well, because uh, you could do that with the the Game Boy if you had uh, a Game Boy uh, reader on your GameCube. You could hook it up and play it on the TV. So that probably would happen. Yeah, all good, all good choices. I'd rather have an N64 Mini than a GameCube or a Game Boy Mini, just because I didn't ever have a Game Boy. Uh, I had an N64 though, and I played the hell out of that console, and I love the games in there. I can't really think of any Game Boy games I would particularly love to have. Uh, plus, they're pretty easy to emulate. N64 games are harder to emulate just because the architecture on it's strange. Uh, so I feel like I could just emulate Game Boy games perfectly on my computer. So you know, Super Game Boy for SNES. Wouldn't that just be the Game Boy Advanced? Is there a Super Game Boy? I thought it was just Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced. And then Game Boy Micro. I didn't I never heard of this uh Super Game Boy. Mario Land would be good for a Game Boy Mini. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I just think it, it seems though that they're going for the N64 Mini first. Uh I don't know if they'll do handheld minis, as I was saying, just because you have to put an entire screen on there. I feel like that would raise the price a bit. Um, and I think it would be better screens than, say, the Game Boy Advance. Because, you know, they'd actually be, like, real backlit screens and stuff. So you could, you know, see in better lighting and things like that. So I feel like it would be more expensive. I think they'd go for the Game Boy Advance, by the way. Because it has backwards compatibility with all the other games. And it, also, and it has exclusive games as well. And exclusive... Uh, you know, it's got color and stuff. <laughs> I don't want to play Game Boy games in that weird, like, green chrome, chroma, chroma, whatever they call that. I don't want to play like that. So. Anywho, let's move on to the next topic. I think we had some good ideas there for the N64 Mini and the games we'd want to see on it. So I think we can... We on to the next topic. The next topic is actually the NPD sales for uh, April. But we're going to look at a specifically Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Because it actually sold really damn well. Like really, really, really well. Because it was only actually on sale for a single two, or I guess two days. Because it was the fourth and the fifth. So it was on sale for two days. It only counts two days of its sales for this chart. And guess what, guys? It was number five overall for the month. 
two days of the month it was out and it was number five overall and guess what this does not even count digital sales doesn't even count digital sales number two overall for the month so let's go over the actual um, numbers here so in number one is God of War 4 I mean that's pretty obvious that game was you know Mike marketed to hell and back I saw it literally every twitch commercial for like a month was God of War 4 people were raving about it makes sense that's number one or two Far Cry 5 Far Cry 5 or Far Cry always sells really well personally I don't really care for the series and 5 didn't really look anything I'd really care about all that much but it's at number two number three MBL 18 the show uh, MBL M MLB excuse me MLB already sells pretty well it's a sports game this is America we buy those number four is Labo variety kit this does not, in not include the excuse me this does not include the robot portion this is only the variety kit section glad to see that it's number four as a lot of it is marketed towards children it's kind of a weird wacky out there idea so for it to come at number four when you know all these other great games are on this list competing with it i think that's pretty good for just this crazy off the wall idea but i'd like to see it a little bit higher yeah but you know it is kind of expensive it's a wacky crazy idea it's mostly targeted towards children and uh you know people with children um you know excuse me i'm trying to word this properly uh, adults that are children at heart so not really something I saw had a huge demographic but I mean it got number four overall so that's pretty good number five Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze two days on the market and it got to number five absolutely insane this is a game that didn't really even sell that well on the Wii U obviously I mean it's on the Wii U but even for Wii U standards it, 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 it sold okay but it was never like a breakout success this is number five in two days. This is absolutely incredible. I mean, we already heard just a couple of days ago that in two weeks in Japan, it was able to outsell the entire lifetime sales of the Wii U version. So people are really hopping onto this game, and I think it deserves it. It's one of the best 2D platformers ever made. It's my favorite 2D platformer ever made. Uh, Richard Studios is a great development studio. 1080p, 60fps. This beautiful, absolutely beautiful game. The lighting's amazing. Textures are great. Uh, Donkey Kong's fur looks amazing. Uh, not so. Not only does it have amazing gameplay, but it has amazing graphics, and it's just overall one of my favorite games in the Wii U. Uh, and it definitely deserved another, uh, you know, breath of fresh air uh, on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm really glad that that did well. Uh, number six. We're only gonna go over the top ten. There's like a whole bunch more we could go over, but we're just gonna go over the top ten. Uh, number six, Mario Kart 8, does include software sales. Good to see that doing well. I guess that's the deluxe version, not the Wii U version. Either. It says Mario Kart 8. I don't know why it says it doesn't say deluxe, but obviously if the Wii U version was selling, that'd be pretty crazy, but it's not. Number seven, Grand Theft Auto 5, because for some reason people still haven't bought that. Number eight, Call of Duty World War 2. Number nine, Super Mario Odyssey. Number 10, NBA 2K18. Uh, Nintendo Switch, physical only games. So this is only including Nintendo Switch. Uh, number one is Labo Toy Con, uh, you know, just the variety kit. Number two, Dunk Kong Hunter Tropical Freeze. Number three, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Number four, Super Mario Odyssey. Number five, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number six, Kirby Star Allies. Number seven, Labo Kit 2, the robot kit. Number two, Splatoon, or number eight, Splatoon 2. Number nine, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, which we actually have a whole topic about because that game seems to be coming with a really good DLC pack. Number ten, Pokemon Tournament, Pokemon Tournament DX. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff we could go over, but we won't because I don't really feel like reading off names for a million years, and I don't think it'd be interesting for you guys either. I can't over the most important ones, so what do you guys think? Let's see. Your friend Jason like Killer Instinct? Cool. I never made it. Ports make money? Bottom line? True. True. I really actually want to get Tropical Freeze again because I want to see how it looks in 1080p, and I want to play through that game again. Uh, just because it's an amazing game as I said it's my favorite 2d platform of all time so I definitely want to pick it up but I think I'll wait for it to go on sale but I definitely think there was a lot of people who didn't own the Wii U who were very interested in this game obviously as in two days eight number five like that's way more than I thought I didn't even think it would hit the top 10 in two days maybe not even the top 20 in two days like 
I was shocked to see this on the top 20 at all for how little it was in there. It's a 2D platformer 2018. Typically those don't do amazingly well, but I mean, it really deserves this. I think it people were singing its praises left and right. Uh, and it definitely deserves that so I'm glad to see that kind of the YouTube community and everyone including myself came together and we we're like hey guys this is an amazing game don't write it off just because it was on the Wii U this game's absolutely amazing and I think people saw that and they they believed it and they went out and bought it so and I think there's also people who you know already knew it was amazing from the Wii U who bought it again uh, so I'm glad to see it doing well in fact, let's just move on. I was going to keep this for later, but eh, let's just keep all the the numbers and stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll get through the numbers so we can get back to more interesting topics uh, later. It actually did really, really well in Japan as well. So we're going to go over the Japan sales as well. In Japan, it was actually number two. Um, this, is, this includes, uh, this is just last week. This is just one week. This is not a whole month. So it sold 15,452 copies, uh, and its total lifetime sales in Japan are 130,000 units. So, but let's go over the actual numbers here. So we can go over the top 10. There's actually seven out of 10 of these games are Nintendo Switch games, which isn't that surprising anymore because Japan is just, Switch pretty much rules Japan at this point. PS4 does well, but Switch rules in, in, in Japan at the moment. So, actually, though, PS4 getting a win right off the bat, though. Number one is PS4, the Caligula, Caligula Effect Overdose. Never heard of this game, no idea what it's about, but it sold 20,000 copies. 20,399 copies. Number two, as I already said, Donkey Kong Country Trouble Freeze. Number three was Splatoon 2 at 12,000, which puts it at 2,323,000 copies, which is absolutely insane. No, I think that's like half of the people in Japan who own a Switch have this game. It's absolutely crazy how much that is selling there. Uh, number four, PS4. Another weird one I've never heard about. Kick You Powerful Pro Yakui. Probably not pronouncing this right at all. 2018. Very weird. Number five, another Nintendo Switch game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. 10,000 units. That puts it at 1.5 million units. Absolutely crazy. Nintendo Switch Kirby Star Allies selling another almost 9,000 units, putting it over 500,000 units in Japan. Number 7 is the Labo uh, Variety Kit at 8,000 units. It sold, it sold 166,000 units, definitely not bad at all. Especially for how expensive it is and just how crazy an idea as I was saying before. Number 8 is actually Breath of the Wild. Usually this comes in at like number 11, uh, but today it's coming in at number 8, which I'm very glad about. I guess the game is absolutely amazing. It sells another 5,600 copies. It's so close to a million copies, people. So close to a million in Japan. It's at 991,000. I imagine uh, probably two weeks from now, it's going to be at a million, which is very exciting because, I mean, it just, Zelda just doesn't sell a million in Japan. It just doesn't do that. Like, it's just not a game that sells a million in Japan. So to see it selling that well is absolutely incredible. Because Japanese audience usually underestimates how amazing uh, Zelda is, which is a shame. Shame on them, but not today. Not these days. Now they recognize the amazingness of Zelda, and they're giving it the sales it deserves. Number nine. Uh, I'll read your comments. I'm just trying to get through this so we can move on to more interesting stuff. Number nine, Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, about 5,000 copies. 1.7 million units sold again sales numbers for games in the switch is absolutely insane number 10 oddly enough is a ps Vita game it's that uh jik powerful pro yaku 2018 whether fuck was on the the ps4 and sold 4,000 units i have no idea what that game is all about um, let's move on to the hardware sales switch 33,000 units uh up actually 2,000 from last week playstation 4 12,000 units, down about 100 from last week. PlayStation 4 Pro, 4,536 units, down a couple hundred from last week. 2DS and 3DS is about 5,000. And I mean, it's just funny to mention the Xbox One because it just sells so bad. Xbox One is 146. And 146,000. Not 14,600. No. 146 units. And this is actually up from last week by exactly 20 units. 
So 20 more people thought that the Xbox One was worth it uh, than last week. So good for them, I guess. Xbox One X, also up. It's at 54. 5400? No. Just 54. That's up from 42. That's up 12. Wow. 12 more people thought they should buy an Xbox One X in Japan. Isn't that crazy? Xbox, you're just really... You're really disappointing, man. I used to love you, man. Xbox 360, Xbox original. Oh, man, it was amazing. Halo 1, Halo 2. So good. Xbox 360 had so many good games. Then the Xbox One comes out. It's just like... What are you doing? Why, why, why are you doing it? I don't understand. What are you guys saying? This music makes you feel like Marie in her kimono is just gonna pop out of nowhere. <laughs> Let's see, it's expected since you're also paying for the game inside the Lebo box. Yeah, I'm not saying it's too, it's overpriced. I'm just saying it's more expensive than a typical video game. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's overpriced. But yeah, I'm glad to see these games doing well. I'm glad to see Donkey Kong doing well because it definitely deserves it. And I'm glad to see Zelda. It's very close to a million. So, glad to see everything doing good. I still need to pick up the Labo kit. I need to pick that up. I want to get the variety kit and do a live stream where I, I make it with you, with why you guys, uh, chatting with you guys. So, but let's move on to the next topic. I actually need to close out these other topics so I know which ones I've already covered. There we go. All right. So, Ubisoft has given us another look at the Donkey Kong Adventure in Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So, we knew that Donkey Kong was coming to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. We didn't exactly know what he would be adding. A lot of people just thought he was gonna just gonna be another playable character, maybe one teeny tiny bit of story, and then just, you know, that's it. Uh, but no, there's actually a pretty hefty amount of content uh, from what I've been hearing from what Game Explained, who got to play it has been saying, or what Ubisoft themselves have been saying. So we're gonna actually going to watch the trailer for it's only a minute long but we're gonna watch the trailer for that if i can pull up display we're gonna watch this trailer right here so i'm gonna mute my mic let you guys watch that and then i'll i'll give you guys some more info on it that i've heard and we'll we'll talk what we think about it so let's get let's get right on into this now before i do that hello Mahrab pikachu how you doing There you go, guys. That was the trailer right in there. I don't know what you guys think about it, but... Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, I forgot to turn the music off, so that's why I kind of just like... Oh, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I, fi I fixed it, though. Uh, but I don't know what you guys thought. For me, that looks absolutely crazy. So let me break down some of the stuff you saw in that trailer from what I've heard from people who have actually played the game for over two hours. So this is what they've said. Uh, I got this information from Game Explain themselves, so if something's wrong, <laughs> you can blame them because that's where I got the info from. Um, but 
first off, the story, it, it seems to have four different worlds you can explore, four different islands, different kind of themed after Donkey Kong worlds that you can explore, uh, lots of different uh, environments there. Uh, the story is that, you know, after the first world of um, the original game, you actually end up, uh, Rabbit Peach ends up pushing the rabid Donkey Kong that you're fighting in a boss battle over the edge, he falls into an abyss and you never see him again, at least not in the main story. But apparently what happened was is he actually survives, he uh, ends up going rampaging around the Mushroom uh, Kingdom and he ends up setting himself uh, back in, you know, a different dimension or a different world or back in time. I don't remember exactly what happens. Uh, but he ends up sending himself to Donkey Kong's world and he is trying to amass an army and Donkey Kong ain't having any of that. Even though technically they're both Donkey Kong, but one's rabid Donkey Kong, one's real Donkey Kong, it's really weird. But, so you're teaming up. You got Donkey Kong, you got rabid Cranky Kong, which I think is just absolutely perfect. And then you got um rabid peach so you find around the different places donkey kong can actually have great amounts of movement options where he can swing across vines he uses those bongos to actually pull enemies because he doesn't have a gun uh he has a banana boomerang which is not as long range as the guns but it can still be long range but mostly he does melee which is super super powerful but of course you have to get up close he can use bongos to pull things in and uh, there's just lots of different options there. He can throw barrels, actually. There's tons of barrels of different things around the stage he can throw. Um, and I just think he looks very much unique compared to other characters. Another thing I really like about this is that, if you didn't notice, they actually remixed music from Donkey Kong 64 for this game, which is absolutely incredible, because Donkey Kong 64 is amazing. The music and that is amazing. I believe David Wise composed that soundtrack. He did an amazing job. Absolutely incredible. Loved hearing that music in there. I don't know if any of you guys have played Donkey Kong 64 or grew up with N64 and had that game, but I am absolutely just hyped for this. Uh, there are going to be selling a gold edition of this game that includes the base game and the Donkey Kong version. I'm not exactly sure how much that will cost. Uh, I think the actual normal version went down in price, so this might be the $60 version now, but I have to get that as soon as I can because I absolutely want this in the DLC. I've been meaning to get Mario and Rabbids for a while, but now that I see this, I absolutely have to get it. Like, it's just, it's a must have. It looks absolutely amazing. And what do you guys think? Let's see here. Should play some Donkey Kong Country music? I should, I'd have to go find it. I mean, actually, you know what, we could find that. Donkey Kong. Country. Let's do the Tropical Freeze on the Tropical Freeze OST. You know what? Let's do Donkey Kong 64 OST. Changing my mind. Ah, uh, there's too many ads in this one. Hold on. Let's go to this. Stop. Oh, it's the DK rap. Ah, uh, the DK rap needs to be in there. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> Let me read your other comments. You're with it? Dude, it is dope. Should stream a game after this because you've streamed just this for a while? Uh, I am going to stream a game eventually. I'm not sure. I, I need to get a video first. Said you can't play that one, Rise, because I have been stuck on that freaking ice boss for a month. You actually apparently only have to beat the first world to play the DLC. So as long as you beat the first world, that's what it seems like. Uh, but it's that's I mean, that's not confirmed. But from what we can tell, you only have to beat the first world because you only have to beat Rabbit Donkey Kong in order to get the DLC. Here there was 10 hours of DLC material. I did actually hear that. Yeah, apparently it's 10 hours long. So that's very true. Can I play Donkey Kong 64 Island music? Uh, if it comes on. I should play stream Donkey Kong 64 live? I don't have Donkey Kong 64. I could probably get a 64 emulator and stream that eventually, but I don't know. That's not in the cards right now. I have so many other games I'm already less playing, so I would, but I already have so many other games. 
But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. I need to get this game. I just don't know when I'll have the money. I just spent $216 on lighting and soundproofing. I am broke. And then, oh, on top of that, I I didn't realize my Crunchyroll month was over, so it charged me again. So I lost seven more dollars on top of that, which isn't that big of a deal. I had the money. It's just like, oh, <laughs> just a punch to the gut because I didn't expect it so soon. I thought that would be another week. I thought it was gonna be like the end of the month, but no. Nah. I forgot I started it like at the before the end of last month, so that came out of nowhere. <laughs> and I was like, no, more money I have to spend. Uh, but luckily, you guys are awesome. You've been supporting me through the donations and streamlabs, and you've been supporting me through, um, excuse me, Patreon. Uh, so I should have enough money to keep to keep afloat. Uh, so you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for that. But let's actually move on to the last, the last topic here. We're gonna actually uh, let me go back to the other OST because that one has too many words in it. It's kind of hard to talk over different words, uh, but we would keep that on. Yeah, yeah, it should it should be that way. So. Let's move on to the final, no, 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 second to final topic. Actually, this is not a great topic, it's a boring topic, let's move on. Nobody wants the boring topics, we want the exciting topics. So the final topic is that Nintendo Switch is selling, or Nintendo Switch is selling, Nintendo is selling in Japan dockless Nintendo Switch units. So, if you want in Japan, you can buy one that only comes with the controllers, the grip, I believe it comes with the grip, it may not. I'm not sure exactly, but it doesn't come with the dock and it doesn't come with an AC adapter. So it's just the unit itself. Uh, these are aimed at people who already have a switch and want multiple switches per household. This isn't really, I mean, you could get it if you want like just if you're just gonna play it portably. But this is really aimed at people who are going to play it with multiple people. You knew that was coming. Yeah, I kind of expected this as well. This isn't exactly how I thought it would be. I thought maybe they would release like a uh, Nintendo Mini or something. A Nintendo Switch, not a Nintendo Switch Mini. Uh, a Nintendo Switch just like, I forget what people were calling it, what we were theorizing. I forget the name, but you know, just a Nintendo Switch maybe with no attachable Joy-Cons, no dock. Uh, you know, probably would come with the adapter though. Just just the unit, but I, you know, uh, take out the detachable controller so it's cheaper. That's what I thought they would do and hit $200. But it seems they're trying to hit uh, about $230. So they are, so it only comes with the console, the Joy-Cons, and the strap. So it doesn't come with the grip. Uh, so it's no dock, no power supply. So it's just people who just want to buy a second system without the dock. And they're selling it in Japan, 26,978 yen, or 244 US dollars. So if you want, if you already have a Nintendo Switch and you need a second unit, you can import this from Japan for around $244. I imagine if it comes to the US, it will be cheaper because usually in Japan, things are just more expensive. I don't know why, but they're just a little more expensive in Japan than they are in the United States. It's really weird. Like if they use weird numbers like 26,978 yen, it's not gonna come to the West. If it does come to the West, it's not gonna come to the West for 244 bucks. Like that's just a weird amount. They're not gonna do that. I imagine it will be like 220 or $200 in the West. Uh, and I think that's good. I think if they start selling these during like Black Friday when people are getting Pokemon, you know, and people are, I assume we're getting Pokemon then, that's just my speculation. I need to turn the picture off. Excuse me, sorry about that. I had the picture on for way too long. But I assume that Pokemon's coming out this year and I assume that's why they're doing this. So, you know, you got multiple people who wanna play Pokemon. Pokemon typically is the portable game. You don't really want to pay $300 for a new console. You pay around 200 bucks for just the handheld unit and the Joy-Cons. And then you can have multiple people in the same household with one Nintendo or with multiple Nintendo Switch, one per person. So I think this is a really good... 
people are yelling in the background. Sorry about that. The soundproofing should actually be here pretty soon as well. We won't have this problem, but I'm sorry. I don't know why they're yelling. Um, $244. That's such a weird price. I would think they would be able to get it down to $200 because the dock net... Isn't the dock like $90 by itself if you want to buy it? Uh, and then the adapter is like 20 bucks by itself. So you'd think they'd be able to get it down to 200 But as I said, it's weird. Things just usually are more expensive uh, in Japan. If you convert it, you know, to dollar amounts, it's usually more expensive. So I wonder if maybe this comes to the West this holiday and it's $200 for just a portable Nintendo Switch. Uh, I think that would sell. I probably wouldn't... You know, I might buy one, actually. Uh, just to get a new, another switch. Yeah, I don't know if I would buy this or not. It's hard. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Would you buy one of these if you have multiple people in your house? Would you do that? I don't know. We need a name for our anime web. How about Crunchy? No, that has it already been taken. We'll call it Chewy Bagel. <laughs> you wonder if it's eighty dollars cheaper? Dock price, right? I think the dock is. Oh, is it eighty? I thought it was ninety. All right. Well, it doesn't come with the AC adapter either, so that should be another 20 bucks. So I'm thinking it should be 20 when it comes to, or 200 when it comes to the rest. That's what I'm thinking. That just makes sense to me. Black Friday and Pokemon, that will be lit. Yeah. Yeah, I think it will come to the West. It's not coming today. Uh, it should be coming... Well, it's coming in two separate packages. So I'm not really sure. Uh, it should be coming by the end of the month. Hopefully. That's the plan. I just spent freaking 150 plus dollars on this thing. I, I hope it comes soon. <laughs> I paid $27. Thing is, the sound blocker itself is 50 pounds. 50 pounds. I had to pay $27 in shipping for standard shipping. <laughs> it's, it was not fun. But I did it, and we're gonna get it. It's gonna be awesome. But yeah. I don't know. It seems like a really, really good idea. I think if it comes to the West and it's $200, I think that's going to sell. I think people will start turning into them. I think at this point, it's mostly, for 300 bucks. I think it's mostly a one unit per household thing. But if they can get it down closer to 3DS XL prices of two, you know, 3DS, 3DS XL is like 180 bucks uh, when it's new. So 200 bucks for a Nintendo Switch is just way more powerful. And then it's a good deal. Uh, I think they should include the adapter with it, but I mean, if you already have an adapter, I guess you can just charge it at some, with the same adapter. Just not very convenient. Hey, Vegeta san you uh, came at like the very last second. I'm about to end. Uh, but I will be doing another live stream, gaming live stream, later today. Uh, so you can hang out with me for that. But yeah, feel free to give me your thoughts about uh, a dockless Nintendo Switch unit, but we're going to actually end pretty soon here. Nintendo did say Switch in every hand. What if you have an alien and you have three hands and you can have three switches per person? How would you do that? You dock in every hand or switch in every hand? You got like two switches per one hand? That'd be hilarious. Imagine somebody trying to play two switches with one hand. That'd be insane. But I know what you mean. I, I, I know what you meant. <laughs> I just wanted to be funny there. But yeah. I think it's a good idea. Hopefully it comes to the West and it's 200 bucks with an AC adapter. But if it comes to the West $200 without an AC adapter, I won't be that big of a deal. Uh, AC adapters aren't that expensive. Actually, you can look it up. How much is the Nintendo Switch AC adapter? We need to know this information. Nintendo Switch AC adapter. Uh, $10 at Walmart. $26 at Best Buy. $20 at Game. GameStop. So, here's a 10 to 20 bucks. So, $220 for a Nintendo Switch. That's a good deal. Um, but yeah. Hopefully they can get up to 200 But if not, eh, 10 to 20 bucks ain't bad. If you need to buy it under one. Or you can just use the one you already have. I don't know. Do I know a lot about Amiibos? Uh, I have several Amiibos back there. Assuming you're talking to me. I have... Amiibos do I have? Last question I'll answer. How many Amiibos do I have? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I have 19 Amiibos and I want to get way more. But anyways, guys, that's all for this. Put your final comments in there and I'll answer them. But that's all 
for this live stream. If you like this live stream and you're not subscribed, please subscribe for more live streams like this one Monday through Friday. Videos Monday through Saturday and gaming live streams Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Also, if you're not following me on Patreon for one to five dollars a month, you can get all kinds of really good goodies. For one dollar a month, you can get a um excuse me, timed exclusive let's play so you get a week earlier than everyone else for only one dollar a month i typically do those four times a month and for five dollars a month you actually get a very exclusive patreon only never ever released outside of patreon let's play currently i'm doing metroid uh super metroid which one video of that is already up and i'm going to be doing animal crossing new leaf so two exclusive uh let's plays only on patreon for only five dollars a month so if you'd like to support me there you can do that down in the description below if you don't want to do that you can just not but it would be very appreciated it helps me out a lot with my channel the only way i could actually afford to get the soundproofing and lighting was from people following me on patreon so if you are following me on patreon already thank you so much it helps out a lot and if you're not consider doing that because it does help a lot and i try to get some good content out for you guys anyways guys thank you all for watching Thank you, Lazy James. Take care as well, you too. Uh, bye, guys. See you, Robeer. See you, Tiny House. See you, Vijay Son. See you, Josh Sheriff. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, thank you, guys, all for watching. I'll see all you guys later on What About Nintendo. Bye!